Good morning. We made it another day. So this is this is almost a continuation of yesterday's video, um, or I guess our, my last video. I don't know when these are gonna post, but welcome to the channel. This is Brian with uh, Forest Hills Memorials. It's Tuesday today, and I've already been out here, same cemetery. Uh, so yesterday I dug this. Uh, cremation burial this grave for this burial so we bought a new table so instead of using a little tv stand we actually have a cremation uh table so i figured i'd show that to you so this is our setup that we do for uh the cremation burial out here at the cemetery just uh artificial green some chairs and then a much nicer table um I'm in the works. I don't. I'm talking to a place about uh, buying a, kind of a cemetery tent, but they're expensive, so we'll see. You don't, don't really make a whole lot doing these uh, graves and burials, so it'll take a while to make up for the tent. But so what I'm gonna do now? Uh, I just stopped over at the trailer and got the our setting box. So I'm gonna head over to that. Uh, black monument that we set and I've got to get it unsealed so you know I've got it setting down on our setting compound so I've got to unseal that get it back on sticks and pull the truck in and uh, turn that die around which I don't like to do but it does happen so this is one of those instances where uh, if you watch the monument pros and you watch Christian and and Kurt, they've got a little device that can lift up on the end and it'd be easier to get your uh, sticks in. So I, I have not bought that yet. So this is one area, you know, I talk about it being an expensive piece of equipment and then, uh, you know, my little oak setting sticks work perfectly fine for installs, but this is definitely an area where you're trying to lift up a die that's existing to get sticks back under it where that piece of equipment would definitely come in handy so either way we'll get it but i want to try to do that uh, before this cremation burial and then i also have another flush marker to install uh, we had it done yesterday but i didn't have a location from the cemetery so so yesterday we asked them for a map so i have that with so a few things to do. I need to connect to the trailer so I can get the gator out. Uh, so we got some things going on this morning. So we'll uh, bring you along. All right, so I've got the die up on sticks. Um, I didn't video that process. It's not the nicest thing in the world. Basically, you got to rock it to get that seal broke and then lean it, which you know you lean it and then get sticks back under it you can see all the joint tight in there um it's gonna get all over my straps and everything but what are you gonna do uh so now i want to get straps underneath there and at that point we're safe and secure so i want to get that in obviously fairly soon just so that that way you know you get the sticks under there better and you don't have to worry about it falling over which is always a concern all right so now we're under the die and we also got to be careful because in this case we do have vases so once you get the die up you can get it up and over the vases, give it a spin, put these off. These things were, so that joint tie hadn't completely set up yet, so this thing was really twisting, which wasn't the funnest thing in the world. So now we're gonna get it recentered and 
set back down. We got a pretty good idea of where it obviously needs to go, just based off of where that existing joint height is. I'd say about pretty close to there. And we'll do the same measurements that we did when we were installing it and then the process is the exact same so once I get it where I want it we'll lift it up and set it down just like we did yesterday so obviously the biggest obstacle in this case is the existing well the vases that are now there uh, so makes it harder to get your sticks in there to lift the die up uh, but once we get this measured it'll be a little easier so we want to make sure our sixes are right right on six which means I'm right on six over here So if your joint height has, you know, if your stone's been sitting there for a year and the joint height is, you know, extremely sealed, it can be very hard to get that seal uh, broken so you can lift it up like this. So that's why when I saw the family out here yesterday, I was like, I will do that right away and turn it because the longer you wait, the harder it is to do this. So again, I wanna get this as close as possible before I take the weight off the truck, which I might have to just to Hey, I'm listening to tunes again. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little weight off the truck just because it's sliding back when I pull it. And I want it to have a little bit more firm grip than that. So I think that now we're still on three. Three there, three and a quarter there. So that side needs to come over. Take some more weight off the stone. I move it and it just moves right back. All right, we're gonna drop it. That's the, so again, you know, moving it in this case, north and south, either that way or that way is the hard part. You know, when you're trying to push from here to get it to go that way, very heavy to do that. Moving it back and forth, you know, from, you know, this way, it's a lot easier. Out of the way. So the the daily music today at the moment on my uh, random playlist is uh, Coldplay. So got that rolling. Some nice. I don't know if Coldplay is considered rock. I don't know, easy listening. All right, so we're going to leave this out because we'll have to measure it again after I get this out. So here's the here's the main issue with these vases. I, I might even take these off and you know clean them up and reseal them down. Um, trying to I might just do that it's gonna be safer so 
so even those aren't the easiest things to get off and they'll just continue to seal down and get harder to remove all right so we're lifting up we're taking off we're dropping down I'll do the same thing over here. Let's see. I don't even know if this stick will fit here. I mean, that's awfully tight if I were to try to do that with the vase on. I'll take that off. Lift her up. I can almost tell already that I need to go towards me a quarter inch so this is the hard push this is the push from this direction that's much harder to do Especially when there's a truck in the way. <sighs> I don't think it's moving at all. <sighs> this is where it's nice with two people also. Front. I've got a lot of a lot of joint tape to clean up. Three and two and three quarters. So we want to push this. It almost seems like it seals harder. <laughs> you can see how hard I'm pushing. All right, that's not three. Perfect. I was moving the whole thing. All right, so we have, so we'll clean up the joint tight first. That's, you know, re coming out. And then for the silicone, we'll use a razor blade to scrape that off. So, I personally, I don't put new joint tight underneath there. It's all still on the stone. It's all still on the base. Uh, I put plenty underneath there that, so I mean, I don't know if that's just a personal preference or what. Uh, you guys might add additional joint tight to the seal. You know, just doing this yesterday, it's still, still fresh as you could tell, it's still really, pliable and it's just scraping right off and the biggest thing is just cleaning it up making it look good again get that out so with the uh, with the razor blade on that silicone I've got to do it, push that spacer back in, I've got to do it on the, you know, on the base and, uh, and the vases themselves, so a little bit of cleaning to do, you know, looking back at it with all this, probably should have used I wanted to use sticks that had our film on them just so I didn't scratch anything. 
and looking back on it that kind of stuck pretty good to the stone so <coughs> I usually don't and next time I might go back to you know not using wrapped sticks so joint tights off it looks like most of the silicone is on the base it's not a whole lot on the base itself but 100% uh, silicone makes a surprisingly strong bond to granite this stuff wasn't even fully set up yet yeah so those were not easy to kind of punch off in the first place and then they weren't even fully like I said set up and all this stuff's still gooey and it could be some of that could be due to um, temperature got up in the upper 60s yesterday but then down into the 30s again overnight so it have a little bit to do with this stuff setting up slow I think the our washing machine is going to enjoy washing these pants <laughs> yeah, there's not much on the base but we're still clean what we can off and we'll do this one pretty much what's on the vase is wet wet yeah this pretty much probably could have just set those right back on top stuff so gooey so I am going to go ahead and clean that base before uh, before I go ahead and put those back on. So that's a paper towel. So I usually, like at the office, I'll use some sort of orange cleaner, like an orange citrus cleaner. Oh, here what I have is this. It's just a multi-surface Windex. It's not gonna hurt the stone. But I'm not super worried about that little residue of silicone that's still on there. Because uh, the, the base is going directly back in that exact same spot so right there It'll always be the case whenever you set a stone, even if it's for the second time, you're gonna have joint tight to clean up off the base where it squirts out. Put that back. So I use uh this stuff's from JB Well. They usually use a different brand, but it's just our purpose, all purpose RTV, 100% silicone. RTVs, room temperature vulcanizing. No idea what that means. But this is the stuff I've always used. And it works well, so. So I always, these vases have a weep hole. You see that? I always point that out. I don't want to introduce any water towards the die or top piece of this stone. So 
I always want that base water moving out and away from the stone itself. Now, cut this joint tight back out. think there was any yeah front looks pretty good so like I told uh, Tim yesterday um, I'll come back over here the next time I'm in the cemetery and double check that joint tight again just to make sure it's all out so that wasn't too bad that one is done uh, family will be happy so they say it didn't, so when I talked to them yesterday, they said it didn't matter a whole lot. But it was their preference that Julia would be close to the busher, bush here, so. That's why they were interested in having it turned. So, you know, they said it wasn't a big deal if it wasn't possible. I told them no problem, we'll, we'll get it turned for you. They just assumed that that's the way the stone was going to set. So you're, you know, the graves are right here. So you're reading the stone as you're standing over the graves. And unfortunately in this cemetery, it's just not that way. Uh, they're set up the other way. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go over and connect to the trailer. I'll get the gator out of the trailer we're gonna need the uh, gator to go over uh, and install that flush marker so that will be what's on the docket next uh, after I get done here at this cemetery I'm going to load up I think four or five memorials and go just deliver them over to Greenwood Cemetery so just a uh, just a delivery, a drop off of memorials. They set their own, so um, so that'll be nice to get some more for families out to cemeteries. So we'll go over and connect to the trailer. Job one done. All right, so we're all loaded up back here at the trailer. Got the trailer connected. Um, I had to connect it because this gator weighs so much. It would have. It would have flip the trailer up so I didn't want to do that so I got to connect it anyway to, to leave so uh, this is not normally what I do so this has all of the dirt from digging that cremation in it kind of sandy clay soil um, so that hole over there is two foot by two foot it's like 26 inches deep so this is all the dirt that came out of that usually I'll wait until the funeral's over I'll put this dirt in there but in this case I'm going to be adding to it so got everything loaded up this is the marker that we're gonna go install and as I stand here the winds starting to pick up again so I don't know if that's due to this warmer weather we're having but kind of sucks for taking video so I'm gonna go get that all lined up I got about I've got about an hour before that cremation burial starts, so I'm gonna try to get it dug out, uh, potentially in before the funeral would be nice. So uh, I'll leave you on while we stroll over to that section.
Chris from the cemetery was out here yesterday afternoon and he put a flag in where the stone goes for me so we're going right there which he was a bit worried because it's one of the reasons they don't do these huge uh, surrounds anymore one you know over time the concrete that's around here is gonna just crack and crumble and they've got uh, examples of that closer to the road over there where you just got huge cracks and the concrete's crumbling and I talked to him I was like you either need to do this where the whole thing's made out of granite and you're not gonna have to worry about the concrete crumbling over time another good example is this one uh, and the one next to it there so you know I either recommended doing that or just getting away with it so the problem with doing these is that it ends up raising the cost of the stone quite substantially uh, so there's a couple cemeteries that do require that still uh, but they decided as a cemetery board to go away from it so which I'm glad because if I had one of those there's just not enough room here if I had to put one of those there it wouldn't even fit so that's another problem is that when you're requiring such huge stones the graves aren't big enough to really uh, handle that you know one wouldn't fit there and one wouldn't fit here for sure so I don't know what happened there but well what I do with uh, these is I'll put a string line down from the interior 2 by one so the inside of this larger piece of stone the polished area in this case is 24 by 12 and in this case the unpolished area is 24 by 12 so I'll put a string line down uh, that way my 24 by 12 will be right in line with a 24 by 12 there so I'll do that I'll get to working and um, I don't think we'll be using the tripod again today so it's not crazy windy but I'm sure you're uh, hearing it so I apologize for that uh, but we'll show you this when this one's completed so just gonna make a side note here just got this string line down uh, you know the string lines pretty close on this stone really close actually but then as you look down the row <laughs> They just get worse and worse uh, so it's one of the issues a lot of i won't say a lot of people but there's people i see out setting uh, that never use a string line and in this case you can kind of tell so these three aren't too bad they're a little off i tried to go kind of split the difference here because as i get down here look how off that is that's off by three inches and when you get down here it's even worse so I don't know you know in this case you just kind of make your own judgment so I'm gonna split the difference a little bit I'm a little bit you know on this side of our closest marker there but you know the more I go that way the more it's off here so I kind of try to split the difference a little bit so that's just another thing that every once in a while you, you come across so you gotta do what you can all right so here's where we're at um, just got done installing this marker uh, it's windier than it was before and uh, my family's starting to show up for the funeral so I did go over there and talk to them uh, it's 20 after 10 at the moment the funerals not supposed to be till 11 so so uh, at any rate uh, here's the completed flush marker so yeah if you see you can see the size difference lined up as best I could and uh, so that one's completed we'll set this up for the family I'm assuming this stuff's probably gonna get picked up soon just being that Christmas is over but so that's it for that one I think what I'm gonna do is go over to the truck and unload some of the stuff that I don't need and then uh, and then we'll be ready for the cremation burial service once they are ready for me and uh, I'm obviously not going to film that but we will uh, touch back 
get back to base. Uh, as soon as I'm done, so I'll check in after I'm done with uh, with the burial. All right, we are all uh, done here at Rockton Cemetery. Um, stone's been turned, stone's been set, and uh, funeral is over. So got that all filled in, torn down, and everything's put away. So I'm hooked back up to the trailer. I'm gonna head back to the office. Uh, it is, well, it's about 12.30 right now. And I'm gonna have lunch and then I'm gonna load up, uh, like I said, five or six, I don't remember how many we have done, but five or six markers for a uh, local cemetery. I'm gonna bring those over to them and drop them off for them. Not gonna bring you for that. So this is where this one ends so i appreciate you watching uh appreciate you subscribing doing the likes all that sort of thing and uh, i think tomorrow uh i will be over at scandinavian cemetery uh pretty much all day i've got a lot to deliver over there uh, i got a big monument that they want me to re-level for them and then we've got a big uh cool monument to set i think it's a half serp it's got some chamfers and cutouts on it so um, New text message from Kennedy. that will be uh fun and then um so we'll bring you along for that and we will end this one here so again thanks for uh watching and we will see you on the next one